So that that was it, surgeon. Now, mind you, I just started up in here and I have it up on these things, so I, could, I was working underneath of it with the pulleys and stuff. But uh, it surges way worse than that. It goes round, 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 and when you're when you're driving it, you, you're actually your head will be jerking almost because it's like round, 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 round. And then you can get it like maybe to half idle and it stop a little bit. It kind of calm down a little bit. But I mean, you know, it's. And if you put it all the way down on the low, it'll be like, oh, huh? it'll almost stall out and then start back up again, stall out, start back up again. So it surges a lot. So now I'm going to take all this, I got to take these bolts out of here and then these bolts from around this shroud. Then there's, there's one underneath of this uh, cover and I'm going to pull this shield off of here. There it is. I took the bolts out of here. See, this just comes off. There's just four in there. And then there's two in here. And then, uh, you know, you take the, I took the fuel pump loose. And I just back these out pretty far. There's like a shoulder. Because these bottom, this thing's slotted. You can take them out. It's no big deal. And then you just lift it off. See, the bolts are kind of sticking out. So when I go to put it on, it'll just, it'll stop. So I won't have to try to line it up too much. It's my theory anyway. Now you get a good shot of the carb here. I'm going to take this the fuel line off here. I got a bolt, but you could, uh, if you had a pair of channel locks, I'd put something on here. Maybe like, I don't know. I don't like putting metal to metal like, like this. Maybe like a couple pieces of wood or something and then, then crimp it down. I'm just gonna jam this uh, bolt into the end and clamp it. A little bit of gas come out of there. See, I'm just, this bolt, I knew this bolt would fit in there because I had this pump off here before. And it could just hang down here because it won't leak. So I took this bolt off of here, or not. This goes forward. I'm trying to keep this so I can actually put it back together. Okay, that spring fell. Okay, there it is. So I'll put this somewhere. This is on here. Put this nut back on here. One less thing to look for. Actually, just throw this on here temporarily. Put the spring somewhere, which is probably the thing I need to protect. And then uh, there's other linkage on the bottom. I'll, re I'll rearrange the camera. This thing's interesting. This, is, this must be the, the automatic choke on this because this thing isn't attached to the motor or anything. But it, when this must be cold, it must be it must hold this down on this plastic part and pull this down ever so slightly. Because right now it's all the way up. Or when it's warm, I don't know. Either way. So I'm just going to. Uh, I think I'm just going to unbolt this. It's just the bolt here and then there's a bolt up on top. And uh, they got to pull this out. It just pulls out. There's no there's no uh, kind of thing you have to put a keeper in or, you know what I mean, like press it or anything. Just pull it. And I'm going to try to get the carburetor off of there. Just got to get this rod to come out and then this... I got to get a flip the carburetor over or something to get these when you're pulling it out. Guess we'll find out. It's like the same size socket as it took to get this uh, plastic shroud off. I'm going to take the bottom two off first and then the top ones because the top ones are super easy to get off. Once I start to pull this off, 
I'm just getting these bolts. These bolts are a pain to get out. Not up here, I got like a swivel. You could use a wrench on this side up here. I'm not gonna pull the camera up here, but there's just a bolt up here. I'm using a swivel on the end. And these things are hard to get out all the way because they got they got the they got some Loctite on them. So you want to put some, a little bit of I'm just gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite on them when I put them back in. That way they won't fall out or anything. Like I said, I loosened these up on top. The bottom ones are off. And then uh, oh boy, Steve, that thing's almost all the way out and it's still it's still binding okay take this off these are only four bolts that hold it these hold it into these ports plus up against the the back of the engine for the other ones so there's no bolts back there and then Apparently this just comes out, and now I'm going to have to, there is, up above here, I'll try to show you in a minute, a couple of hoses, Ugh. take off, don't see these at first. I said your your tractor might not have all these, but this one does. It's this model. Yeah. Pain to get out of here. I'm just trying to film it in case something falls off and I just want and I'll be able to. <laughs> Go back on the camera and look, and look at it. Okay. I'll show you those, what I was pulling out up above. It's on the back of this. It's a PCV thing. This, I think this just bends down and comes out. Of course not, it doesn't. Okay, I'll just bring the camera up here so you can see what I'm talking about. That's the thing about filming. You gotta start moving the lights around and everything else. Let me undo this. Okay, up here's what I was talking about. I was pulling this out, it just pulls out of here, and then I had to get this hose off of this part. Now this, see, it goes up. So I gotta get that rod out of one or the other part here, and then this rod, and then it'll be off. And then I can separate whatever I want because they put these nuts on the back of here. And I'm gonna get some. I'm gonna try to get a couple paper towels. I see you got a little bit of dirt right there, and I'll uh, I'll put something in there temporarily. Okay, this was in here like this. I actually put a little bit of magic marker on it so I'd know black. The black goes up. Um, you just squeeze it from behind with like needle nose. And now there's still a hook on here, but now it'll allow it to come out once I twist this carburetor around. And then this one, I'll just have to, you can see there's a hook that goes like that. I'll just have to work it around until I get, figure out which one I gotta take off first. Okay, I'm gonna try to get one of these out. Okay, that one's easy. And this one, it's kind of tilted over here. No, okay, then that came out. Okay, now the carb's off. Hopefully I won't lose any of these arms. See this one over here? I marked this one black so it doesn't go in that hole. Okay, so I take these off. So I'm going to take this over onto the bench. I cleaned it off a little bit. Actually, I'm going to mark. I was using a little bit of carb cleaner on it, so I'm going to actually mark the one where this actually goes. Hopefully, that'll stay on there. It's there's this tab, and then it's on this first one. 
because there is a hole underneath here too but so tab and then this is where you want the rod I'm not even doing this in case the thing falls out and I'm gonna see there's the tab and there's where it goes in the hole now on this side it's in there pretty self-explanatory I'm gonna take these bolts off I just loosened these with the socket socket here. Take this off here. Now you might not even need to take this off if you're just gonna do these uh in here, but I'm I'm I mean I'm gonna have it off here so I'm taking the whole thing apart. I know because there's some uh stuff in there I wanna clean out. Since I got it apart, hate to go in there and just put this little kit in here and then have some of these things are plugged up that I needed to take apart. You know, and then have to take it all back apart again. Or wonder why it's still doing it. You know. So I'm just going to take it apart. I think it comes with this little gasket that goes underneath these nozzles. So, this gasket looks good here, though, so that's good. Because I didn't get another one, so. So I'm not going to take the other part off. Oops. So you see what's going on here. These things are extremely tight. I got them off with a so is it DeWalt P2 Phillips. I tried it with a regular Phillips man and it started to walk and then I pushed down on this thing as hard as I could and I got these out. I didn't take this out. Um, I know you're supposed to. I've seen them take them out before. It was really tight so I'm just taking these out just to see if if I can get this off without doing that. You can always put the screws right back in if this thing won't pull up. Okay. There's inside. There's a lot of dirt down in there. I just want to check this. See if this plunger works. Yeah, seems like it does. But yeah, that thing's dirty. I'm gonna probably gonna take this over and try to get this off off the mower, which I wouldn't suggest doing. Hard to tell what's going on with this. Now this stuff just you just push this pin out like so. Just pull it out. See the bowl holds it in once the bowl's in here. That's why you're thinking, oh, how's that held in? Well, once the bowl's in there, it keeps it in there. And there's a little uh, the flute valve there. It kind of just like well, fell off. Oops. Anyway, it goes in this little slot right there. I'm going to put it back in there. 
I'm gonna make sure it's I'm gonna clean it off with a rag or something. Not, you're not supposed to put any carb cleaner on this stuff because it'll ruin it apparently. There's like a lot of there's a lot of jelly in here. I can see it's got like a, I don't know, it's like a let me see if I can pick some of it out with something. So I'm betting it's some of this plugged up here. I mean, look at this stuff in here. It's like jelly. But you can see that. So, it's probably got something plugged up. I'm gonna take these screws out here and pull that stack off of there because there's there's holes and stuff underneath there. Little ports that I gotta clean out with carb cleaner. And then I'm gonna take these two jets out and put new uh, O-rings on them. I got this little kit. It came in this little bag here. And it comes with little O-rings that go on there. Then it comes with this one. Which, see, this don't look bad. I think this carburetor might just be dirty. You know what I mean? Because the gas probably sat in it for a long time. So, we'll see. I'm going to put the kit in it anyway. But this bowl's filthy, so, yeah. All right. I'm just taking, this actually is a Christmas tree hook. I think the uh, bread, the thing you tie up bread with, if you peeled the paper back, would work too. But this is a, a hook off of a, you know, for ornaments and stuff. So I'm just going through these holes with it. I've already blown this out with, carb cleaner down these holes and it blows out this end here and then black through here and it, it was blowing through these uh, pickup tubes and, but everything looks already pretty clean so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and run this through I've ran this through here through these and then blown that out and then I'm gonna do it once more then I'm gonna uh, like I said I was blowing it down through these holes and then through the back, through these. These are all clear. I was holding them up to the sun. I can see right through them now. So, anyway. I took that, I got that uh, fuel shut off out of that bowl. I just stuck it in the vise and, and then I uh, turned it with a wrench. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to turn the key. Of course, mine's electronic, but. Go in. Nope. There it goes. Now when I, I'm gonna release the brake, and you'll be able to see it because this has a brake safety thing. It will shut the fuel off too, so I, I can tell it's all working. So that's good. And that'll stop your fuel if that's if that's broken. Some people just will cut that tip off. Now that's like the anti backfire and all that, so you know, that's your own risk, of course. I mean, a lot of people take off there if it's broken because they're not cheap. But it, when you turn the mower off, it doesn't go pop, you know what I mean? Because it's a lot, it cuts the fuel off. So I think I've found the problem here with this carburetor, other than it's filthy, which definitely could be. I notice when this is uh, flipped over. Those jets fall right out of there. So that means just all kinds of gases coming getting around them and they're not doing anything. So I got little O rings I got in that kit. And I'll I'll take this out. This one looks good actually. But these I'm gonna take one out at a time because one is bigger than the other one. And I don't wanna mix them up. Let me put this thing in here temporarily. I know it just sits on there. Like that, apparently.
So I'm going to do that. Jeez. I have to be careful here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Way to, so you won't lose them. Did you pull the rubber out? Why I was using this Christmas tree hook, just bend the top here and then bend the bottom. Then only one can come out at a time. So pull the one out, put the little rubber gasket on it, push it in, then do, then maybe put the clip back in there. They shouldn't fall out anymore, but because that's the whole point of doing this. So I guess you wouldn't have to do that. But uh, yeah, so only one will come out at a time now because one, like I said, one is different, a different size than the other. Here's the kit, by the way. It comes with another gasket, which I'm not going to change. Uh, I'm changing this one, this big one, this one. I'm not going to change this nozzle one because it it's clean. I cleaned them all out, and it didn't look like it was, you know, if I was shooting at one nozzle, it wasn't going through the other one. So it, it seems like it's fine. If not, okay, I'm taking a risk, but I don't feel like taking a butterfly out and all that to get to it. So here's this tiny little O-ring right there. That's the one that goes on the jet, and then there's one over here, and then it goes on the other jet. Okay, here, here's the new one over here. Here's the one I took off. I mean, there's like basically nothing left to it. I mean, I took it off with a razor blade. Of course, I cut it. I don't know if it was intact when I was doing it, though. But there ain't much rubber to that compared to looking at the other one. It ain't even close. So, and it wasn't being held in with anything. So here's the one jet. I took it out, cleaned it. Um, and I'm going to put this little rubber thing on here. Okay, I'm going to go off camera and do it. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't want to lose it. Okay, so it's been a couple days since I was working on this. I had to order some new O-rings. The ones that came with this kit, um, here's one. Now here's the other one. Obviously it looks a lot different. Well, when I tried to push it in, I kept pushing it in, used the lubrication, push it in. I just couldn't get it in, no way. It just wouldn't seat. I was like, well, Take it up, put it in a freezer. I mean, you know, I did everything. There was just no way it was going in. Finally, I got it in, but then I, I was I was looking, and I was like, "Wow, look at that!" I pull, I was like, "That just didn't feel right. It really wasn't seated good." So I pulled it back out, and this is what happened. It sheared off some of the rubber on the edges of this. Is it in there? Yeah, but I mean, that can't be good. And I was like, well, I'm not going to do this again. Not right right away, because if the thing falls out, because it's all screwed up. So I went online, because this was a cheaper kit. I think I paid like $8.50 for this. Free shipping, something like that. It wasn't very much. So I went back online, and I ordered... I think these are like Buna, and it doesn't really... I, didn't, I don't think it really said what rubber that was. But these, these are Viton O-rings. So... These are resistant to like, uh, you know, like uh, ethanol and oxygenated fuel. And, I mean, that's what it said anyway. And uh, I can tell right off these. Let me bring one of these. Let me bring this other one up here. Are smaller. You can see that? It looks like those, once they're stretched, don't fit. So, now these, these were five bucks for six of them. Obviously, I didn't need six, but that's, that's what, uh, that's what he had. I mean, he had a lot more, but I was like, well, I just, I'll just get, you know, the minimum amount. So, I'm going to try those now and see. Looks like that should work now. Okay, there, it's on. I have it on this thing this actually helped because I probably would have dropped that little o-ring <laughs> had I not used that I'm gonna use a little uh, 
WD-40 here, just on my finger. Let's see how easy it goes in. I, I wouldn't have dared try this on cam before because I was here for like an hour going, why isn't this fit? Okay, this was tight, but it went down and it's flat. So, there it is. As you can see, well, this is the this is the one I didn't do yet. It just it just falls out. So, let's make sure that's in there. So that was a good idea buying those, because I. To get it like that took me like an hour the last time, and then it ripped it in half. Here it is. Here's the, here's what I took off. I don't have the original one. I don't know what happened to it. It's broken in half. This was the one that came in the kit. This was the part that was left on the, on the jet. Here's the part that ripped off of the when I put it in. Would it have worked? Eh, probably. It's intact. But, boy. I was really stuffing it in there. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. I got the other one on. To get them off, I just stick a uh, razor blade and stick it down in the crack. And then, here's remnants of it. It just, it breaks up. It was intact. It just basically, I mean, it was still all the way around it. The gasoline must just eat them away. You know, with ethanol or whatever. You know what I mean? So... Not, not much. Didn't take much. And then you just kind of go like this. And you'll feel it start to go in a little bit. It's tight. Don't think it's not going to be tight. It is. And then make sure when they're seated. They are uh, flush with this white part over here. You can you won't feel the edge. So if you feel an edge, it's not down like on this side. I don't go down all the way apparently. At least it's darn close to being flush. I think it's flush. It's hard to tell. There they are. So I'm gonna start putting this thing back together. It's like a new gasket for here and like this. Actually, well, I can see there's like an indent here. It should be fine. It'll hold it. And then, then this this thing here. Which you would think you'd stick it in there. Well, you don't. You want to put it on this part. It fits down over this, like that, just kind of loose there. And then when you put this back together, then it'll, then it's just kind of seats on top of it. This is the old one. This groove where the bowl ring goes. Clean that good. Now I'm going to put this on. But maybe put it in there because it does have a lip on this side. So put it. I'll do it upside down here maybe. I don't know. Probably that probably doesn't work that great, but. kind of you can kind of feel where it goes I guess it's I don't see it so it must be seated in there so I'll just uh, go ahead and uh, 
tighten this down. Float. Put this on now, I guess. Down the groove here. Slides in there. Oops, oh, went wonky on me. I don't know about this stuff. This is what I get for buying a kit like this. Anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this back together. That big gasket, what I did was I just went around it and stretched it a little bit you know all the way around and then it would set in there because it was kept coming out and then this is you when you go to put this on you'll be like hey this isn't going down far enough but that's it's it'll be like a that that washer you put up in there it like must press up into that thing pretty tight so yeah just putting the bolts back in now and this gasket this side looks, you know, it's messed up when I peeled it off. So I'll clean this off a little bit more. Then I cleaned this side, so I'm just going to put it on that way. Lines up, same. So let's use this side to face the carb. Okay, so I got the carburetor back on. I just put this bolt in here temporarily just to hold them up here. I'm going to, uh, Put some a uh, little bit of blue Loctite on all these because they had Loctite on them. So I'll put a little bit more back on. Oh, you don't need that much, I don't think. Oop! I just put it at the bottom because then it, it'll go all the way up. So I just put these. What you want to do is, I don't, I'm not going to tighten them, I'm just going to get it pretty close. And then I'm going to take this and that, and then there's the ones underneath, I'm going to lock tight all of them, and I'll bring you back. Okay, I got it all back together. I'm going to, I haven't tried to turn it over or anything, so, you know, it's got no, uh, you know, fuel in the bowl or anything, so it's probably going to take a few times before I can get this to turn over, so... Throttles up, choke no choke because it's not uh, it's not uh, cold. So okay. this time. Kitten. Let me 
try it real fast. It's not really warm yet, but I'll try it. Oh yeah, get the fire right up. Nice, nice idle. Well, turn it off. Okay, I don't know if you can hear me talking through that, but it uh, it runs perfect now. So, <laughs> just must be those jets. I mean, it probably if you just pr replace those uh, O-rings on there and get the right ones, which I had the right ones for the carburetor. I, I got the right kit. It was the right numbered kit. It's just that company just doesn't put the right, right O-rings in it or expects you to smash the hell out of them. So, anyway, so that's done. <laughs>